Many Muslims believe that the Holy Quran is filled with scientific miracles and astounding facts which couldn't have been possibly known 14 centuries ago. Take for example Surah 25 verse 53. It is he who has let free the two bodies of flowing water, one palatable and sweet and the other salt and bitter, yet has he made a barrier between them, a partition that is forbidden to be passed. This surah is talking about estuaries, the place where the fresh and sweet river water meets the salty ocean. The first part of the surah is a statement based on common man's experiences. River water is sweet and palatable, while sea water is salty and non-palatable. This is a straightforward fact known to the mankind since time immemorial. In fact, Archimedes understood far more than the fact that sweet and salty waters just differ in taste. He even mentioned that salt water is heavier than sweet water. Then you may wonder what makes this verse so miraculous. The interesting bits come in the next part of this verse. First, let's look at the green colored text. Yet has he made a barrier between them. Is this really a very profound statement? One may still argue that people living long before the time of Prophet Muhammad might have guessed the presence of some sort of a barrier simply by using common sense. The deduction is pretty simple. River was the main source of drinking water during ancient and medieval times. If river turned salty and unworthy of drinking over time by interacting with the sea, people would have noticed the taste difference in the river water. Since rivers don't turn salty over time, something, for example, a barrier, could be preventing salty sea water to mix with the sweet river water. Notice that no scientific knowledge has been used so far for this deduction. We only relied on observation, common sense, and basic logical reasoning. For the verse to state something really miraculous, it needs to go beyond what could be deduced by common senses and everyday experiences. Indeed, this verse goes one step forward. See the last part of the verse in yellow text, a partition that is forbidden to be passed. It is a very strong and concrete statement, almost like a law of physics, explaining the cause that prevents the seawater to mix with the river water. The barrier's properties have been very rigorously defined. It is a partition that is forbidden to be passed. All translations make it crystal clear that it is a forbidden barrier, inviolable obstruction, insurmountable barrier, banned barrier, etc. This is the law given by Almighty Allah, the creator of the heavens and earth, the omniscient being. So it must hold for all estuaries in the world and also must be true for all times. There is no room for any exception. This should be an eternal truth. Rivers and seas being Allah's creation are forbidden to break this law. First we see how Dr. Zakir Naik, arguably the best Muslim apologist of our times, proves the miraculous nature of this verse. In the field of oceanography, there's a verse in the Quran, in Surah Furqan, chapter number 25, verse number 53 says that he has led two bodies of flowing water, one sweet and palatable and the other salty and bitter. Though they meet, they do not mix. There is a barrier which is forbidden to be trespassed. After science has advanced, we have come to know that whenever one type of water flows into the other type of water, it loses its constituents and gets homogenized into the water it flows. This today science calls as the transitional homogenizing area, which the Quran refers to as Barzak, as a barrier. Since Zakir Nayak has used the word homogenize a few times, let's see what Merriam Webster has to say about the synonyms of this word. Well, one synonym as expected is mix. What I'm going to do is, whenever Zakir Naik would utter the word homogenize, I would replace it with mix. We will shortly see its implications and important consequences. Let's slowly hear the first excerpt. Though they meet, they're not mix. 
there is a barrier which is forbidden to be trespassed. So, as per the verse, sweet and salt waters do not mix due to a forbidden barrier which cannot be trespassed. This is the key point. Let's remember this. Now we slowly hear the next excerpt. That whenever one type of water flows into the other type of water, it loses its constituents and gets homogenized into the water it flows. This today science calls as the transitional homogenizing Mixing. area which the Quran refers to as Barzakh as a barrier. So Zakir Naik completely contradicts the statement he just made seconds ago. Now he says that when the first type that is salty sea water flows into the other type that is the sweet river water, the salt water gets mixed with the river water. Hence, there is no such thing as a forbidden barrier between sweet and salt water which cannot be trespassed. Also in oceanography, there is no such term as transitional homogenizing area. The correct term is mixed layer, which by the way might occur in some estuaries under low tidal conditions. So by using the word homogenized instead of mixed, Zakir Naik tricked the audience into believing that the two waters don't mix. However, his statements actually meant that they indeed do mix. This implies that Zakir Naik has actually debunked the scientific miracle claim himself. If you are not familiar with the subject or you are not very attentive, you will surely fall prey to Zakir Naik's trickery. Thankfully, I am a marine scientist. If the best Muslim apologist has to use such a pathetic deceitful strategy to prove the divine origin of this verse, then this has been done for a very very good reason. Zakir Naik is not a stupid guy. This implies that most likely there are some very serious issues with this verse which cannot be defended. Why this verse cannot be defended? For a start, Let's see the standard definition of an estuary. An estuary is a region where fresh and salt water mix. This is taken from Noah's website. Well, for Muslim apologists like Zakir Naik, this is extremely embarrassing. Noah stands for National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. And like NASA, it is a very big American scientific agency. NOAA focuses on the conditions of the oceans, major waterways, the atmosphere, weather, and climate. According to this verse, there must be a barrier that acts as an inviolable obstruction between the river and the sea. I could think of two possible outcomes. Land barrier between river and sea. Very sharp boundary like that between two immiscible fluids. Immiscible fluids means fluids which do not and cannot mix, however hard you try. For example, oil and water. Such kinds of estuaries may exist in someone's imagination, but unfortunately do not exist in nature. Just in case you thought that the land barrier thing is hilarious, Tafsir ibn Kathir mentions that the partition is a dry land, like this. Tafsir al-Jalalain mentions isthmus or land barrier as well. In reality, there are broadly three kinds of estuaries based on circulation. Number one highly stratified estuaries in which the mixing of fresh and salt water is low. The diffused interface is known as pycnocline, helocline or mixed layer which Zakir Naik refers to as the transitional homogenizing area. Number two, partially mixed estuaries in which the mixing of fresh and salt water is moderate. And number three, well-mixed estuaries, in which the mixing of fresh and salt water is very high. 
In case you're wondering how long estuaries typically are, they can be quite long, like 100 to 200 kilometers. So if you are living within 100 to 200 kilometers from the river mouth, the water would indeed taste a bit salty. Note that pycnocline is absent in partially and well-mixed estuaries. In all kinds of estuaries known to marine scientists, there is unfortunately no such barrier acting like an inviolable obstruction. Hence, what happens in reality is the exact opposite of what the Surah 25 verse 53 claims. Freshwater river and saltwater sea are miscible simply because salt dissolves in water. The extent of mixing can vary from low to high depending on the strengths of the different forcings and this gives rise to the three broad kinds of estuaries that we mentioned. The different forcings in an estuarine system are tides and the river flow which together gives rise to the gravitational circulation. Then there are additional forcings like wind stress, waves, turbulence due to the bed roughness and so on. Think about a situation when you very cautiously make a glass half filled with salt water and the other half with normal water and then stir it with a spoon. The more you stir, the more they will mix, right? In estuaries, this stirring action is provided by all the forcings that I have mentioned. Let us go through the different types of estuaries that we broadly observe in nature. The first kind are the highly stratified estuaries. Let's see what NOAA's website has to say about this estuary. Highly stratified estuaries are also known as salt wedge estuaries. If the conditions are such that the tidal motion is very weak, seawater intrudes in the form of a wedge along the bottom as a consequence of the higher density of seawater compared to fresh water. This gives rise to salt wedge estuaries. A sharp boundary is created between the water masses, with fresh water floating on top and a wedge of salt water on the bottom. Some mixing does occur at the boundary between the two water masses, but it is generally slight. Hence the interface between fresh and salt water has to be somewhat diffused. Columbia River Estuary and Hudson River Estuary during low tides classify as highly stratified estuaries. The next kind of estuaries are partially mixed estuaries. In slightly stratified or partially mixed estuaries, salt water and fresh water mix at all depths. I repeat, salt water and fresh water mix at all depths. However, the lower layers of water typically remain saltier than the upper layers. Examples of slightly stratified or partially mixed estuaries are Puget Sound, San Francisco Bay, Chesapeake Bay Estuary, etc. The third and the last kind of estuaries are well mixed estuaries. A vertically mixed or well mixed estuary occurs when the river flow is low and tidally generated currents are moderate to strong. The salinity of water in a vertically mixed estuary is the same from water's surface to the bottom of the estuary. Strong tidal currents eliminate the vertical layering of fresh water floating above dense seawater. This means that in this kind of estuary, the mixing is complete. Examples of vertically mixed estuary are Thames River Estuary, Delaware Bay Estuary, etc. I highly encourage you to verify my statements. If you can spare 15 minutes, please do the following Google search and go through the highlighted NOAA's webpage. This webpage has been mostly used in this video and has been linked in the description. For beginners, details about estuarine circulation and mixing can also be found in this website, which I have also linked in the description. For a slightly advanced reader, I would highly recommend reading this book, specifically chapters 2 and 7. 
Another great book on this topic is this one. Mixing in estuaries is a vibrant research area and Google Scholar reveals a whooping 142,000 research articles on this topic. In summary, there are no estuaries in this world where there is no mixing. There are no barriers that act as an inviolable obstruction. In fact, what we observe in nature is the exact opposite of Surah 25 verse 53. Rivers and sea always mix. The level of mixing can range from low to very high. Also, depending on tidal and river flow conditions, which can change over days or a few weeks, an estuary that is highly stratified can become partially mixed and vice versa, and an estuary that is well mixed can become partially mixed and vice versa. Estuaries are a highly dynamic environment. If you think about it, this verse says something that we would expect from someone living in the Middle Ages, like men in 6th century Arabia. They wondered why river didn't turn salty by interacting with the sea and came up with an unscientific divine justification which completely disagrees with our 21st century scientific knowledge. I will wait and see how the real Islamic miracle, the miracle of reinterpretation, gets applied on this verse. For now, let's enjoy the golden words of the world-renowned medical doctor. Though they meet, they're not mixed. There's a barrier which is forbidden to be trespassed. 